Hi, it's Tanya with Red Cardinal Crafts, and today I'm going to do a beginner bobbin lace video. Um, I've had some requests to see some more of this bobbin lace, so I figured I would do a beginner lesson. Um, Betsy Brown had emailed me a while back, so hello Betsy, sorry it's taken me so long um, to do this for you. She wanted a beginner video just to see if it was something she might be interested in doing. So, and then Drew Sumwalt, I believe his name is, he just emailed me the other day and that got me looking back at my comments. Sometimes I'm really slow to get back to comments, so sorry about that. Um, so if you want to see any of my supplies for Bob and Lace, just look back at uh, this channel and it's video number 74, it's my Bob and Lace supplies. This is the cookie pillow that I use. Um, it's, um, I forget the name of it, but it's foam, but it's a shiny kind. <laughs> if you know what I mean, not the kind that'll flake apart for packaging. Um, so it's a cookie pillow. It has a slight dome to it um, a little bit, and then it has the blue cover. And traditionally, uh, you use blue or green just because it's easier on your eyes when you're working. Then this is the pattern. This is the first pattern I ever did um, with my teacher. She drew this out, and you can see that it was done on graph paper. You can see the, the marks. So... Um, and this is quite large. If you see some of my latest um, bookmarks, I'll show them to you here. Uh, this one I just did the other day. So they get a little smaller and more um, intricate. These are called spiders. It's just different types of doing spiders. And I've done these ones recently. So you can see that the work um, is finer, and it also depends on the thread that you're using. The thread that I bought with the pillow, it came with um, it came with some thread, and it's not very good. Uh, my supplies came from Snow Goose. There's another company called Nordic Needle, which is where I'm going to be buying my supplies next. Um, oh, <laughs> look for the bag; it's under here. The threads it came with. Um, my pillow was it was this but it's basically a crochet cotton and it's size 10 so it's really um, too thick for bobbin lace but I'm using it today because well I bought a lot of it I'm gonna be using the green um, I have some of these in variegated colors but I figure it'd be easier to follow along if I'm using a solid color um, so what I have been buying lately was this it's called um, wildflowers by Karen and it's just uh, a thinner, this is about an 8, um, my teacher uses a 12, and um, she uses um, Leah brand, um, or she uses DMC, but she usually uses the, the Leah. So I'm going to be going on to Nordic Needle and purchasing um, some of the DMC, but the problem was when I ordered these, I only ordered one skein, and I really should have ordered about three or four, just because some of the larger projects I've done, you need um, more than that amount of thread. So this amount here did those bookmarks that I just showed you, but that's all it will really give you enough to do. Okay, so to start on your pillow, you have your um, pattern, and it's on just like a thick blue cardstock. So when you work on a pattern, if I was to just finish this one, take it off your pillow and just rotate your pillow around. You don't want to be putting the same pinholes in the same spots all the time. So you just take this, I have my little pin cushion, and you just pin it down to your pillow. Just try to center it in the middle of your pillow. And just put quite a few pins going around. You don't want it to be sliding around. And when I'm out at Dockyard working on this, we get a lot of um, people that come off the cruise ships and a lot of people comment and say that their grandmothers have done this before, their mums have done this before, and we had a lady come by the other day and she has all of her grandmother's supplies, which is so cool, because she'd have all like really old bobbins and stuff. So that was pretty neat. Okay, so now my oh, it's a big truck outside <laughs> beeping. Okay, so now it's pinned down. Then I have these. This is just unbleached cotton, and I dyed these the other day. And I just used that RIT, you know that dye stuff that you can buy? I just bought the denim blue and just 
dyed them in my, my sink. I think my teacher does their, hers in the washing machine, but I was terrified to turn my washing machine <laughs> blue. I've never used dye before. And I usually don't have the best luck with things like that. <clears throat> That's why I don't have a bottle of bleach in my home, because I've ruined so many clothes trying to use that before. I had a brand new outfit when I was... I just had our first baby. And we had gone out to a party earlier that day, and then when we came home we were having some friends over. And I heard that Martha Stewart put bleach in her flower vases to keep her flowers nice and or keep the water nice and clear in the vase. Of course, I still had my nice new just had a baby outfit, feeling good about myself. <laughs> and I got bleach all over my brand new pants. So, after that day, bleach left my home and never returned. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just pinning these down, just pin them down on either side and pin them across the top. And all this does well, it serves a couple purposes. It covers up those pins that we just put down the sides. Could, you don't want your threads getting snagged on those. And this is also good for transporting your lace because I usually um, work on this outside of the home and I go to my lessons. And what you can do to cover up your work, and I will show you if I remember halfway through here, um, when you have all your bobbins and all your lace, you can flip this back over and cover up your work so it doesn't get dirty if it's just sitting at your desk and you just don't want it to get d dusty or messed up. Um, so, and you just, and also for transporting it. And you can put this over top and pin it all down and it keeps all your bobbins um, still because you do not want to be putting this um, in a bag and not have your bobbins secure because you will get home with a knotted mess. All right, so this is my little pin cushion. So I'm just gonna pin this up here. And I usually do two pins in it because it tends to wiggle. All right, so now here are the bobbins. Now, if you've seen my supply list, you knew that I had bought these from Snow Goose. Unfortunately, if you can see this, this is supposed to be a pair. <laughs> they don't totally match. And when you're working with bobbin lace, you want your pairs to match. So it's a little frustrating. So I just match the big bobbles. That's as good as I can do this one here. You can see that it's the clear, but then they use purple on these ones and green on those ones. So what my teacher has suggested is that I dye the, um, the actual bobbins and dye them in certain colors because some patterns it just doesn't matter, but when you get into complicated, bigger patterns, you do need to keep your bobbins together as pairs and it would just be easier if they match. Now, like I said, this is a really thick, um, thread that I'm using and it tends to slip off of these bobbins just because it is so slippery and so large so it's a little bit annoying. Now I left a pair um, without the thread just so I can show you how I do that. First <laughs> I have to figure out where I put it. I think I put it back in the bag. Did I? Yes I did. Okay. Now to measure how much thread you're going to need, now some they do have bobbin winders, I don't use them um, because it's just as easy to wind it just by hand. So I just hold this basically in front of me and then I take this arm and stretch my arm as out as far as it can go and that's basically one yard, that's how you can measure it. So I want about two yards, so I'll stretch it out another arm's length again and then just cut. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in because I'm not going to be able to do this up above my head. That's a little tricky with the camera up over top of me here. Okay, so the thread is going to be all wound on this part of the bobbin. So you just take the end of your thread and just lay it right across this bumpy part right here. And just hold it with your finger. And then you just wind it up and then back down, and when you come back down to here, let go of that little tail, and then just incorporate it in underneath. And you just keep winding till you have, now we're measuring two yards, so we just want half of it on here, so we just want one yard wound around here. And all I do to measure how much I have is I just take this and keep it in front of me and stretch my arm out. I still have a little bit more that I can wind on here. And just work it up and down, just like as if it was loading 
a bobbin on a sewing machine. Just work it up and down so you get it wound on. Then what you do is you have to lock your thread around the top here. So you just wind it around your finger and then you take that loop and you put it over the top of that and what that does is it creates like a little slip knot like that. Then you lay that one down and you get your other bobbin and you do the same thing. Just lay it across here. How do I bring my light over? Okay. So you just lay it down like this. Sorry, I'm trying to see what I'm doing and trying to make sure I'm on camera at the same time. Not always easy. You just flip that little tail over and just lock it in. Now the reason you want to do the slip knot over the top there is because you need to extend your thread at certain times when you're working. And that just allows it to hang on to the bobbin and it lets you adjust it. So when you get close like this, wind it around your finger and do that little knot over the top again. Okay? So now you've got a set of bobbins that look like that. Now for this particular pattern, and it's going to be different for every pattern you do, these are the uh, five holes that we're going to be working towards. But what you do to start your bobbins is you actually pin up above that. Now to start this hole, I want to come in with two pairs of bobbins to work towards there. So I'm going to do a pin hole up above here. And when you place your pins in, you need to do them at a slanted angle. If you put them up like this and you're working and it's straight up like that, eventually you're going to be pulling on that and your threads are going to slip right off your needle and you're going to lose all your work. So if you tip it back like that, your work will stay on there and stay secure. So I'm actually going to be putting, it's five um, holes that we're starting with, but we're actually putting in six pins at the top. Now these six pins are eventually going to come out, but that's just to get us started um, on the pattern. So we want to take our bobbins and we want to loop them up over the pins so they're hanging like that. And we're going to do the same with all these. Now you can see that these ones are a little bit longer than those ones and we're actually going to want to work with them a little bit longer. So because we have those slip knots we can just unwind it and it still stays attached. So I have, now there's six pins but I have ten pairs of bobbins and I will show you why. So we're going to put all these bobbins over the pins for now. I'm so avoiding housework to do this video right now. <laughs> I'll have you know. So I'm going to do this video fairly quickly. <laughs> I have to go clean my house. Ugh, oh, denial. Okay. So here are the six pairs of bobbins. Now, I'm going to be using these two pairs to make that hole right there, and then I'm going to need two more to come into here, but where I've already brought this one over, I don't have anything to come over from there. So what I have to do is I have to place an additional pair of bobbins over this pin so that those two are going to go together to make that knot. These two are going to come together to make that knot and it's going to happen again. So on this third pin I need another set. On the fourth pin I need another set. And on the fifth pin. Now on this last, on the end ones, I don't need a pin because those are just going to come in like this anyway. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the same thing happens when I do my bookmarks that have the point at the top. I do a single, uh, I just do one pair of bobbins on each thing, but at the very top to get me started, I have to use two bobbins. So it just depends on your pattern um, how many pairs of bobbins you'll actually need to get going. Alrighty, so let's get this going here. Alright, so we're going to start over on this side and work over to that side. So here are my pairs of bobbins and I can tell that they're my pairs because they match. <laughs> I use that term loosely. Okay, 
So I'm just going to slide these ones out of the way because I'm not using them yet and I'm just going to use these pins that I use to um, pin down my fabric. They're just corsage pins but they're just nice and tall and they hold your um, bobbins out of the way. Now before you get started you always want to cross over and create um, like a, well basically a cross. Not a cross, um, what am I trying to call that? Just twist it, <laughs> okay? And same with this one, we want it twisted and you twist from right to left. So you want your um, things twisted like that at the very beginning. Now we're gonna do whole stitches. Now there's whole stitches and there's half stitches and those are basically um, the stitches you use for bobbin lace. Now whole stitch, what you do is you have the two pairs of bobbins and you're going to number them one, two, three, four. Now this is, you don't have to keep this in your head after you get going, you don't even have to think about that anymore, but just for explaining purposes, so this is uh, placement one, two, three, four. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take number two and put it over three. Now this one's in the new two position. So you're gonna take two and four and place them over those ones and you're going to take the new two and move it back over. Now that is a whole stitch. Now I'll zoom, I'll come back out and I'll show you what that does to the thread. So I'll just zoom in and show you what that's actually doing. So when I do it like this, that's two goes over, the other two lift over there and then this one comes back over. So really you're taking the set of bobbins that was over here and moving them this way and you're taking the set that was here and moving them that way. So they've just crossed over each other. So that is a whole stitch. If you were to do a half stitch you would just put two over three and two and four back over that way and that's a half stitch. So what makes it the whole stitch is that one extra move of that bobbin going over. Okay. So just make sure they're crossed at the beginning, over, both over, and over again. So that's your whole stitch. So once you do your whole stitch, then you're going to put your pin. Now let me just adjust my tripod here. Sorry I have to keep moving and jiggling, but I don't have a film crew, so it's just me. Okay, so after you get that done and they're crossed, you want to put a pin in there. Now where do you put the pin? You put it in underneath all that thread. So it's lifted completely up out of the way, you place your pin, make sure it's at an angle, and then your threads come down over the top of the pin. Now you need to cover your pin because it's exposed, so all you do is you do another whole stitch again. So over, over, and over. And that's your whole stitch, and just grab your bobbins in your hand and just pull it up towards your pin and basically lock it into place. Okay? And then just do a little twist at the end so that your threads are twisted and ready to go for the next move. Now we're going to grab our next pair of bobbins and I'm just going to make them a little bit longer. I'm going to start them off with a twist. Now these two are finished for now. And we're going to grab these two pairs of bobbins. Just make sure they're twisted and you're going to do the same the same movement, so over, over, over. And now we've just made that next stitch. We take a pin, and I tend to lift my bobbins up so I can lift the threads out of the way. Place my pin, and then you're going to close over your pin. <clears throat> now because I know I'm doing whole stitch all the way through this pattern, I'm giving these a little twist just so that they're ready to go for the next, the next stitch. So I'm going to twist these over, twist these over, 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 over. And you place your pin, and you want to cover your pin. Do not forget to cover your pin. And just move these over to the side. And don't just like lump these all over it. You've got to keep them separate. So that's why we're working on a pillow, and that's why they're flat. And I have my bag of threads just kind of underneath here because it keeps my pillow slanted a little bit like a little bit of an angle so that gravity kind of takes over and pulls down on the bobbins. Okay so I just want to make sure these are 
have a little twist to them first. A little twist. And then again, whole stitch. I'm going to place my pin. Sorry, I should have my pin cushion over on this side so I don't keep putting my arm in the way, but it's just what I'm comfortable with. And that's how I learned, and I just always have had my pin cushion on that side. Now, as you're working, this crazy thread is going to come off. I find this doesn't happen as much with the thinner threads, but it does still happen. Alright, and now we're going to go and finish off this row. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just so thick, and the bobbins are so little. I really like these bobbins, though. These were from Snow Goose. Um, I really enjoy these. Alright, so we're going to cover my pin. And there you go. So we just have done one row of bobbins. I just want to get those with a little twist so I don't forget. Alright, so now we're going to work down on the next row. Now you could go back in the next, in the opposite direction, but I usually work from left to right as I'm working, so I'm going to slide all my bobbins over. Okay, the next hole I'm going to do is this one, because you work progressively down. Now, there isn't a hole to go here, it's over here. So I don't need this pair of bobbins right now. So I'm just going to kind of put them out of the picture over here. Just zoom in a little bit. So I'm just going to use my corsage pins and keep them out of the way. I just want to make sure that these have a twist and I'm good to go. If you get to the point and you're like, oh my gosh, and these get twisted somehow and you're like, well, I don't know which pair of bobbins I'm, do I'm using, you can always undo that stitch and expose your pin again and then go, oh yeah, right, and go back and do your whole stitch and now you know that this is the pair of bobbins you're supposed to be using. If you ever get confused, you can always undo the, the stitch. All right, so I've got them crossed to begin with. I'm just gonna continue with a whole stitch and I'm gonna be working back over. Now stay with me because I'm going to show you how you remove those beginning pins that we don't need anymore. So now I don't use this next set of bobbins even though it's the next one over but I still have to go up and do this hole because I'm working along this row. So now I find the next pair of bobbins that are going to come down to make that. So it's these two here and you can tell because your bobbins somewhat match. <laughs> and now I'm going to do a whole stitch. Now I will do another video soon of one of the more complicated bookmarks. And now that I have my camera and I have a tripod set up over top of me here, it might be easier to watch what I'm doing and follow along. It's hard because I don't know whether you guys want to see how I'm working the bobbins or if you want to see a close-up of the um, of the lace that's being made. So, I mean, I guess I could do a little bit of both. Alright, so now we've done two rows. Of course, this is coming undone again. Bear with me here. Do not buy size 10 crochet thread. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is why they sell it with the package. I have no idea because it's not, it's not the best. All right, so this first six pins that we put in, that was just basically to hold um, the bobbins until we got started. But we don't need those anymore. So what you're going to do, and these are the only pins you're going to remove at this point. You don't take out any of these other pins until you're done your project. So I'm just going to remove this top one, and all I do is I'm going to gently tug on the bobbins until that little bump disappears. Now this one, there's going to be two that come off, and I'm just going to wiggle the bobbins until I figure out which ones were holding those knots. So you see that they're kind of snugging into these other pins. It's a very technical term, snugging in. Alright, so you just kind of wiggle the bobbins, Pull a little bit until you figure out. Don't pull too hard. Um, this is practically rope that I'm using, so it's not that big a deal. But a few weeks ago, um, I was doing a pattern, and I had my thinner thread, and I yanked too hard, and I snapped it. And guess what? When you do that, you pretty much have to start over. And that was not fun. <laughs> I wasn't too far down the pattern, but I had to undo, and I had to rewind some thread on my bobbins because it was snapped. All right, and now we'll take out that last pin, and there we go. So everything is 
up to those points there. And like I said, those are going to stay in until you get down to the very end. All right, so now we're coming along and now we have the next bobbin. So you're going to bring in this pair, this outside pair. Make sure you have a twist in each of yours before you get started. Now with this outside one, I'm actually going to do a little twist at the end. So I'm just going over, 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 and then I take these two and do an extra little twist. And all that does is when you're coming down the side of your pattern, it just gives it a nice little bit thicker edge to it. So I put my pin in, I want to cover my pin, and again, same movement, and I'm going to do the little twist at the end. So that just creates a little bit of thickness coming down that side. So again, I'm done with these two pairs of bobbins. I'm going to come in with these other two over here and do a whole stitch. Now I could technically do the twist right now just so I make sure that these have the twist. It's totally up to you. I usually just do it as I, as I go so I know exactly where I am. and because it depends on what pattern you're doing. Sometimes, like when I do those spiders, you don't just do one twist, you actually do three. So I just leave it. I just do the twists coming down the side and in the middle when I'm working, I just do um, what I need to do with it when I get to that point, if that makes <laughs> any sense whatsoever. All right, so I'm going to leave at this point let me just get to the end here, and that's another thing. Just always finish a row or finish what you're actually working on at that moment. See, I did the extra little twist because I'm over at this edge now. And there we go. So always complete um, a section if you're doing a zigzag like we're going to be doing here. Finish that before you walk away if you can. Um, if you know you're not going to have time, don't even start it. I'm just going to separate out my bobbins so I know what I'm doing when I get back because I'm going to go and <laughs> tackle some of my housework and you're not even going to know because I'm just going to appear again um, in a little bit but I will be back and when I am I'll be down so I'm just going to be working that whole stitch all the way down and down these sides and then I'm going to get started with the zigzag so I'll be back at that point when I get to there. Alright, did that make any sense? <laughs> okay, I'll be back. See ya. All right, my lighting may have changed a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit later in the day, but the housework is done, thank God. So, all right, here we go. So we're gonna do a zigzag. Now, you can see that there's a dot just kind of at each end. So we're gonna bring two bobbins in to meet that um, hole there. And we're doing hole stitch. Pin. and now you just follow the line and it loops over to this way so we're going to do the same thing bring those two bobbins in oops sorry hang on important thing when you're going through this you do not want to cross these threads because it's going to look like a grid pattern when you come down through twist coming in, make sure it's twisted when you're coming in from the sides, but as you're working through the pattern, you don't twist it. I forgot about that. Okay, so whole stitch again. Now we're going to pin here. And 
Now we're going to go back this way. So I'm going to work through this pair here. Then I'm going to bring in a set. And I'm going to pin. And you just keep working down the zigzag. And you can see that there's gaps, but what's going to happen is the threads are going to work their way down and it's going to be like a, like a cross-hatching kind of thing going on. Alright, so we're done with that one for now. So we're going to be pulling them in from the sides as we go through. So now I'm going to work my way back. Bring in another set from this pin. pin here. I'm zoomed in on the on the zigzag more so than the bobbins because I'm just moving the bobbins the same way that I was before. So now I'm going to work back through all three of these pairs. I'm going to bring in another pair over here. Pin to lengthen my bobbins a little bit. And then we're going to go back over. And then bring in a pair. Lost its loop. We're gonna pin. You can kind of just kind of pull on the bobbins a little bit just to make sure that it's coming down nicely. I'll just zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. So see how it's doing like a cross hatch pattern? And it's the same stitch that we've been doing all the way up through here. But just when it goes back and forth like that, this is what it ends up looking like. So I'm going to go back across. Bring in another pair. Like I said, make sure that pair is twisted when you bring them in. Oops, hang on. I spoke mid or I spoke as I was, yep, alright. I don't think it looked like that when I started to do it. Just back and forth. Now this pair on the end, we're just going to do it like we've done the edge all the way down. We're going to do the whole stitch and then the twist on the ends. But now we're at the edge of the zigzag. Hang on, that kind of jumped a bit. Alright, so we're at the edge of the zigzag. So I'm not going to use this pair anymore because the zigzag is going to be in there on the next go and this pair is meant to go all the way straight down. So I'm just going to put a pin and block those off so I don't use them again. Which is smart to do because when you get doing some of these patterns and they're larger patterns and you forget what you've done going in one direction, it makes sense to pin your bobbins back so you know which ones you're using and which ones you're not supposed to use anymore. Okay, now I'm over to this side, so I'm going to do the whole stitch with a twist. We're going to, whoa, <laughs> I pulled too aggressively. Alright, so there we go. So now I'm done with that pair, I'll just pin them out of the way.
Now I'm using this pair here for the last time. Well, not that pair, this, <laughs> this pair on the end. And I'm going to continue with my zigzag all the way down. And then I'll come back and get these other ones on the sides. So I'm done with this one. This one pair, so I'll just pin and keep those out of the way. So when I do some more complicated bookmarks, I'll show you how to do spiders and rose ground and different stitches like that. But for now, this is just kind of the basics and how to move the bobbins. Now I'm done with this pair here. Just pin those out of the way. And every once in a while, I like to just adjust and make sure that this is going nice and neat. Okay, so I'm going to work back. Oops. This one bobbin does not want to cooperate today. So I'll just zoom out because you see what I'm doing. So so you can see the bobbins again. Now I know I'm done because these guys are already pinned back and I realize that this is my last pair. And you also know if you're doing it right, if you have off of each needle a strand that's the two threads coming off of each needle. Might not make sense right now, but <laughs> if you're working along, you've done this a little bit before. Now I'm down to the last two pairs of bobbins and I'm just going to pin at the bottom of the zigzag and there is the zigzag pattern. So now it's just going to continue all the way down just back in whole stitch the rest of the way. So I'm going to continue with that and I'm just going to speed up the video. Alright, so we're at the bottom now to finish off. There's no real easy way to finish this this particular one off. Um, when I do the larger bookmarks, um, you kind of weave it in together. It comes down to a point and, um, and you do this whole twisting thing. Let me find one of my bookmarks to show you. Uh, 
let's see here. You can see it kind of good on this one. Oh, maybe you can't. You can see that it's um, like a braided kind of twist to it. And you can see how it comes down to a point, and then there's the twist, and then your tail. So with this one, because it just finishes off square, there's no real other good way to do it. So what I just do is, let me just zoom out a little bit. I just take the the bobbins. Of course this one. There's a couple in particular that keep giving me trouble and I suspect it's the same ones. Okay, so you take your two pairs of bobbins and you just make what you would call a granny knot, which is just like if you were starting to tie a pair of shoes. And you just take it right up to your pin and do that like three times. So you're going to end up with a few little tails. Like that. And then just do it for each of these going along. And when you're finished your project, um, I still have all the pins in it. Just leave it for about a day. Um, it just helps the threads to kind of settle down and rest after being twisted and moved and everything. And um, yeah, so you just finish it off like this. All right, so I have all the tails done. And I'm just going to use my embroidery scissors because they're better than my craft scissors. And just do your tails, snip, and there you go. And then to undo your bobbins with the thread on it, you just have to pull and they come off. And then you wind them all back up again and you start a new project. So there you go. So just leave this for um, just a day or so and then it just um, it lets all the threads settle down after being twisted. You don't have to starch this or anything. It just um, it stays fine the way it is. So. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya.